Buckle up as we embark on a journey into the heart of Fuller Motorsports. It's time to unleash the beast and feel the rush of eight cylinders of pure power running down the quarter mile of glory. In the world of drag racing where speed is king and adrenaline flows like nitro through your veins, one name stands above the rest, Fuller Motorsports. Welcome to the race pits. This towering rig is the mobile command center, housing the tools, equipment, and expertise necessary to transform a high performance engine into a beast ready to conquer the quarter mile strip. It's not just a vehicle, it's a symbol of the team's commitment to victory. The men, a diverse group united by their passion for speed, work in harmony to assemble and disassemble the drag car. The engine roars with anticipation while they fine tune every component ensuring it performs at its peak. In the pit area, it's not just a workshop, it's a meeting place for the community of racers. Teams from all around come together forming a network of support. If a team needs a part or a tool, they can come to these men and they'll help each other out and they are fellow race car owners and friends who've raced in some cases for many, many years. In the world of drag racing, friendships go hand in hand. The camaraderie extends beyond the checkered flag and it's the spirit that keeps the drag racing community strong. My name is Dave Uhara. Uh, I've been with Mike Fuller uh, racing and even drove for him for a while but uh, I've been with him since the late 60s and still with him and uh, we've been all over the United States racing and uh, wow well, we've done very well as we've been gone along. Mike Fuller has dedicated his life to pushing the limits to taking that extra step and achieving the impossible Fuller Motorsports is a team of dreamers, builders, and racers. Mike has a cast of characters that help make his vision reality. One of those passionate men is the man behind the wheel, Brett Williamson. So Brett, how does it feel to be the top dog here racing this car? I don't know if I'm the top dog or not. You're the, you're the top dog in our book, bro. <laughs> Well, that's awesome. I appreciate that. So I guess with that said, then it feels pretty good. That's good. <laughs> sure. Now, what are you doing right now on this thing? I'm mean, trying to make this intake valve seal better. Had a little leak on that last run, and we normally switch cylinder heads every run to kind of make the maintenance go quicker. So I'm getting it ready for to be put on for the last qualifier tonight. My name's Braxton Fletcher, one of the clutch guys for the team. Been with them um, just a little over five years. Um, God, why do I do this? I absolutely love it, man. Uh, I got into cars when I was just a little over 16. Didn't know nothing before I started with these guys, and I've learned a hell of a lot. You know, working with all these guys, got 30, 40, 50 years of experience doing this. It's Knowledge you don't get access to every day, and a lot of people don't have the luxury of being able to have access to these guys. You know, it's the team camaraderie. And it's uh, different with these guys. It's uh, We all think the same. We're all working towards the same goal, and we all love it. Um, frankly, I just think this is one of the best experiences I've ever had access to. Learn a hell of a lot. Have a lot of great times, a lot of fun times. And just being able to work on something like this and see it run is just absolutely amazing. It shows a lot to, you know, what you could do when you get eight, nine, ten guys together all working on it. We put some magic down on the track.
Ian Riles from Boise, Idaho. Been with the team since 2018. Uh, love coming out here. Been doing it for nearly 40 years. I'm so fortunate to be able to work with people that I used to read about when I was younger. Now I'm actually working and racing with them. I've been doing this long enough, but I still learn something new every time I come out, especially about building this motor. It's a big deal. But I don't think people understand the amount of time that goes into these on the back side, especially when we're at the shop or on the road. It's a big deal. But I'm very fortunate to be here. Um, love, love racing. Been doing it. And will continue to do it as long as I can. Hi, my name is James Richardson. Uh, I've been working for Mike for five years now. I do oil, check tires, check the blower, and help the other guys. It's been an honor and privilege to work for Mike Fuller and the team. Okay. Gary. Jerry, how do you feel about today, bud? Well, uh, better than yesterday. <laughs> the engine is ready for the next run. Brett enters the starting line. He starts to rev the engine, smokes the tires, and gets ready for the race. In the world of drag racing, the relentless pursuit of perfection doesn't end with the finish line. It begins in the pits. And with every run, these engines are pushed to the limit, torn apart, reborn to achieve their peak performance. For these teams, it's more than a race. It's a way of life. My name is Joe Wolfenberger. I work on the engine for Mike Fuller Motorsports. Uh, I've been with Mike since uh, 1973. Uh, and uh, must not have enough sense to quit. So that's about it. Uh, just been with them a long time, great person to work with. We had a lot of fun together. Dominic Frades. The real question is, is what do I not do? You do a lot. For the but I, I do, I do, I do a lot, a little bit of everything. And what are you doing now? Taking the heads off to inspect our uh, blown motor here. What do you like about uh, racing so much that keeps you coming back each season? Mm, pretty much everything. The hard work of seeing it perform, of all the work you put into it, and the thrill at the starting line, I guess. My name is Eric Richardson. I work on the Forever Young Top Fuel Team. Uh, I'm the car chief, so I work in between the owner, Mike, who is the crew chief, and I make the adjustments on the car between his knowledge and Brett Williamson's knowledge, the driver. We make decisions and then I make it happen on the car. So I've been working on the car, I think for about seven, maybe eight years now, started out uh, just washing parts and worked my way up and uh, very fortunate that Mike is so generous to let us uh, do this and he takes great care of us. I couldn't ask for a better uh, car owner and crew chief.
The post-race ritual is a symphony of precision and passion. It's the moment when every inch of the engine is torn apart, inspected, rebuilt, oiled up, fueled up, and tuned to precision for the next run. This is where champions are made. The engine, once a fiery inferno on the racetrack, is now a puzzle waiting to be solved. Every component from the massive methane-fueled engine to the finely tuned injectors is scrutinized. Meet Clay Frades, the clutch man. In the heart of the action, Clay is the unsung hero, the master of precision, and the key to clutching the victory. When it's time to perform under pressure, he's the one you can count on. Dominic and Dylan are Clay's sons and are a part of the race team. You will always find Clay in the heart of the action, whether it's adjusting the clutch, fine tuning the engine as it starts, or backing up the race car at the starting line. Clay is a big part of making things happen for each and every race. So we are in Mike Fuller's office. As you can see, he's got uh, some great pictures on the wall here. Uh, just an amazing view out the window from the shop. And there is the man the myth and the legend, Mike Fuller right here. So we're gonna ask Mike some questions and see uh, how he's doing here. I'm gonna put this on my chest. Sure. Sharon, let me, let me fasten this to you. I'll just hold on to it, huh? Yeah. Okay, start asking. So how long you been racing, Mike? Uh. 20 years this time. How yeah. many total years you've been racing? Since 1964. This is my, uh, uh, my other voice. That's your other voice? Here. Over here. Uh, almost 60 years, 60 years. Well, I quit for 20 years and went in business. You, oh, you started racing in, uh, I think, 90 or 91. What's your role with the team, Sharon? I'm the cook. You're the cook. That's yeah. why. We're, cook and I've that's, been cooking for these guys for years, and they owe me. Well, that's why they're all thin. <laughs> you dirty dog. Anyway. And what do you love about the races? What 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 gets you excited to go back year after year when you went? I just want to be with my husband. Uh. <laughs> I don't like the races. No. I do. I do it for Mike. I, I like the people, uh, well, there's, you know, and now a lot of my good friends aren't there anymore because we're all getting old. So I miss that. I miss the Rodex and in uh, Allegra and John and all our friends, we were having so much fun. That, that was, I like the camaraderie of all the people, you know, the racing is, uh, I would uh, spend the money elsewhere. So what would you want to say to your crew or anyone that's going to watch this video? Well, I think that uh, the guys, some of the guys that's, some of the guys that's racing with me now raced with me 25 years ago. So it's something you never get out of your system. You know, I, I think that uh, racing has come a long ways. Cars are, are twice as fast as they used to be. But in the same sense, uh, it, it's, it, you know, everybody runs better. So... So you got to keep up with the fastest car. That's, that, yeah, that's, the, yeah, that's yeah, the game. Yeah. New parts, new pieces, new cars, motors in different places. Uh, Dave Yahara and, uh, has been, ra been racing with me since I started when I was 18 years old. So it's, and I'm 84, so it's been a while. But I quit, I, I quit for 20 years and went in business for myself and, uh, went back racing after I got more successful. Everybody everybody contributes something to it, to the car running better or running good. And the guys have been with me for a long time. And since I've been back, I don't know, we've been racing this time about 12 or 14 years. So these guys have all been uh, with me from the start, sort of. So, some, of them, some of them are a little bit too young. So uh, I think Dominic, 
Dominic's been a big part of this thing, and uh, and Dave Yahara, which which raced with me back in the '60s, is still here, and he got a fr uh, his buddy uh, clamp on is uh, a, a big deal, and we got new drivers quite naturally. So, I mean, how long am I gonna keep racing? I, I have no idea. When I get tired of it, I'll quit. When you get tired, you'll quit. Yeah. All right. And so, anything else you wanna you wanna say for uh, for for your grandkids watching or anything? Well, I, a couple of grandkids uh, go to the races with me. So, and and uh, uh, Dominic uh, is kind of a key part of this program, and he's got two or three friends that go that go that go to the races with us with Dominic. And Dylan Dylan's a good cook. And he, Dylan. Uh, He's the uh, older of uh, my daughter's kids, and uh, he uh, he does makes food for everybody, so that's great. Oh. And no, it's getting expensive, more expensive. Yeah, if, if it costs as much money now, it, uh, if if it costs as much money as we're spending now to go race it twenty years ago, I'd have never made it. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> oh shit, no. Yeah, everything's expensive, and nostalgia racing is the, what what we do is really a little bit different because the only thing nostalgia is the cart the motors in the front but other than that everything else is all new stuff and it's very expensive so it's a lot of money to keep up with and uh, oh, yeah. a lot of fine tuning yeah. and parts yeah. and chop swapping stuff out yeah when i started drag racing way back when uh people had open trailers and and uh they they put motors together and 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 uh uh wasn't expensive like it is now it's more sophisticated of course everything is so how did, how has technology played a role in helping technology you? is at, we're going faster now uh than 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 uh if, if we were if, if the speed that we're going and the fast we go now is is uh it, it's faster than the old cars did back in the sixties and seventies. Now, now the the, the pro guys uh, that run the cars they they, they broke that three hundred mile an hour barrier a while back down to three twenty three twenty five. In the world of drag racing, dedication is often the driving force behind success. Mike Fuller embodies this commitment in every aspect of his life as a drag race car owner. Away from the track, in the confines of his workshop, Mike's dedication to achieving top performance is nothing short of inspiring. So we're in the shop here at the Fuller House, Fuller Residence, and uh, the rig is parked in here, uh, as well as the race car. And this is the shop. This is where all the uh, action happens when the race car is parked. And uh, I'll take you for a quick little tour here. Basically, you got obviously all the tools they're wrenching on the car right now. Got Mike Fuller and Dominic Brady's happening here. And here's all the equipment. And these guys just uh, are able to do a lot of the machining here and a lot of the part customization. So if you walk through the shop here, you got a bunch of tools uh, uh, happening and these guys work hard to get this race car ready but this is basically all for that race car that drag race car and uh, they work hard they do a lot of uh, customization and and fine-tuning on that machine to get it running for each of these races and they got it all up and uh, being torn apart and parts being shipped out for certification from NHRA and yeah, this is where they get it ready for the next run. Liza? Liza, what do you have to say for yourself? What do you want to say to the crowd? Go on, just say it. All right, there's the race dog, Liza. Finally, it's race time. The fans gather in anticipation for adrenaline to flow as the top fuel dragsters line up for their runs. Excitement is in the air as they ready for the earth shattering power running down the track.
As Brett sits in the driver's seat, his anticipation is palpable. Every fiber of his being is tuned into the moment. His gloved hands clench and unclench on the steering wheel, and his heart pounds in his chest. This is it. This is what he lives for. Driving a 2,000 plus horsepower drag race beast is like dancing on the edge of a razor blade. The power under the hood is unimaginable, and the danger is ever present. One wrong move, one misjudgment, and it can all go up in flames. Brett takes a deep breath. The world narrows down the track ahead. In this moment, Brett is fully alive. The danger, the speed, the power, it's a delicate dance between life and death. And as he races towards the starting line, there's no turning back. Imagine yourself in the stands at a drag race, the sun beating down on your skin as the anticipation builds. The roar of the crowd is deafening, but it's quickly drowned out by the thunderous engine of a top fuel dragster. You can feel the ground trembling beneath your feet as the cars approach the starting line. The air is charged with excitement and adrenaline as the countdown nears green light and the dragsters explode into action. The sheer powers of these machines is awe-inspiring as they accelerate down the track in blur of speed and noise. Your heart races. You can't help but be swept away by the raw energy and intensity of the moment. It's an experience like no other, a symphony of power and speed that leaves you breathless and wanting more. The dragster roars back after a triumphant sprint. Not a victorious one, but a crucial clue pointing to necessary adjustments. Again, every detail is dissected and scrutinized with unwavering determination. The engine is meticulously disassembled once again, piece by piece, while the crew inspects every facet of the motor after the last run. They tirelessly refine even the tiniest nuances in preparation for the next race. Here, champions are forged, where the smallest modifications can catapult you to greatness. These individuals epitomize champions, whether they clinch victory or taste defeat on the racetrack. Their passion, dedication, and sacrifice are left on the asphalt as they look to attain peak performance. Fuller Motorsports is a team of visionaries, a team of champions.